Hey guys, this is KJOS and there is so much hype surrounding the new Infinix 08. This is Transion's new mid-range smartphone and for the price, the pros do outweigh the cons. But I'm pretty sure you guys would like to know what those cons are just as well. And that's why we bring you 5 best and 5 worst things about the Infinix 08. And like I always say, let's get this party started. Let's start this on a positive note and talk about the best things I liked about the Infinix 08. And the first best thing I liked about it is the 90Hz refresh rate. This is by no means a new feature, but it's a step in the right direction for Infinix considering this is their first phone with a 90Hz refresh rate. Now, using the Pixel 4 or the iPad Pro and other devices that have a 90Hz display, this was up to par. It's the most talked about feature and it's the selling point for the campaign and for good reason. It makes scrolling through social media and gaming a lot better and compensates for the lackluster display on the phone, but more on that later. You have the option to switch back to 60Hz whenever you want, but I don't really see anybody doing that and for two reasons. For one, you're limiting your experience. And number two, the battery life will still hold you through a full day with this 4,500 million pounds of battery, even with 90Hz display. Now, by any chance, if you actually run down your battery throughout the whole day, the next best thing about the Infinix 08 is the charger. The second best thing about the phone is its fast charger. The phone comes with a 33 watt charger in the box, as well as a USB-C cable, which is also a step in the right direction, as a lot of devices like laptops, computers, and iPads have ports to accommodate this. Yes, I'm looking at you, Apple. Anyway, having a 33 watt charger has its advantages. On the Infinix 08, it literally charges your phone from zero to 65 in 30 minutes. So you wanna go out and you're out of battery or you're less than 50%, you're covered. You want to have a full battery before going to work, you're also covered. Honestly, fast charger should be a thing in 2020 in every single smartphone that's coming out this year and years to come. It's literally saving time and most importantly, it's saving lives. The third best thing about the Infinix 08 is the processor. For all intents and purposes, this is a gaming phone and in the center of it all houses the MediaTek Helio G90 chipset. Now try saying that fast three times. This isn't more powerful than the Snapdragon 720G, but it's able to hold its own with benchmark scores against a lot of mid-range phones that are out there. Add the 90 hz refresh rates and you have a solid phone that can go hours of gaming without the battery taking a huge dent. Now, add eight gigs of RAM within the phone and you also get a very good app retention on most apps that are not too tasking. I'm not a huge mobile gaming fan, but I mean, I still hop on Call of Duty and Injustice 2 every now and then, but I was pretty satisfied with my gaming experience on this phone. I tested it and moved the refresh rate back to 60Hz and my experience was totally different. So trust me when I say this, always leave the phone on 90Hz. Now the fourth best thing about the Infinix 08 is the retention of the headphone jack within the phone. Now in the world that is moving away from the endangered headphone jack, Infinix decided to add this in their phone, which is great for people that still want wired headphones over Bluetooth headphones. This might be small to some, but it's pretty huge to a lot of people. I've said this in a lot of my videos, there is still a huge percentage of people who prefer wearing earphones or headphones to Bluetooth ones. So far they are there, phones like this have a target audience. Which begs the ever glaring question, how long before the headphone jack eventually dies? And my hot take is this, I doubt it will never die, it will always be in existence because there are people that are still going to want wired headphones over Bluetooth headphones. And there are going to be companies that are going to provide these things to these people, which is like an added benefit more or less. So, so far those two things are still in this world. I think it will always be there. But let's see what time says. Finally, the fifth best thing about the phone is the price. It comes at a price of $295, which is pretty decent, but not to we Nigerians, as the exchange rate right now is really not the best. $295 is approximately 127,000 Naira and may hinder some people from buying this, but nonetheless, it's priced really well and similar to the Redmi Note 9 Pro and the newly released Techno Camo 16. The Infinix 08 is a good price in most countries it's available in, but kind of meh in Nigeria. Now let's move on to the five worst things about the Infinix 08. These are the things that I found out to be very underwhelming when using the phone, and to some, these things might be deal breakers all the same. Starting off this list is the display. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that the 90 hz refresh rate compensates for the salt part display, and it's quite clear that Infinix took a few shortcuts when assembling this display. It has a 6.85-inch IPS LCD screen with a 1080p resolution. For one, the phone fails to impress in outdoor environments as its brightness reaches a maximum of 450 nits, which is very hard to recommend for a good outdoor experience. There is a lack of color mode, so it has subpar accuracy. Overall, it has a bluish tone and it's quite clear Infinix chose a cheaper LCD panel and the 90Hz tries as much as possible to mask it. The second worst thing about the Infinix 08 is the bloatware and the ads. This is probably one of the worst things within the phone. 
So you have a decent form factor. You have 90 Hz refresh rate. It now gives you a software that makes everything a bit more tedious with the creeping barrage of ads that pop up every now and then. Now couple it with the amount of bloats where you need to uninstall. Look, I get the strategy they're trying to implement here. They put in as many apps and as many ads into the phone to reduce the end user costs. But in doing that, they more or less harm the user experience because as soon as you set up the phone, you are met with a lot of ads and a lot of apps that you're not meant, you're not quite sure what they're meant for. And a lot of these apps require permission, so that may be a security concern to some. The third worst thing about the Infinix 08, like most Infinix phones, is the lack of Android updates. It's currently on Android 10 and might remain this way forever. And with Android 11 around the corner, it begs the question on whether the phone will get at least one update. Currently, Android 11 is being pushed to the Pixel lineup, and I installed mine yesterday after being on the beta version for the last couple of months. Now, with a lot of Android phones that are out there, each phone company like Transient has to tailor Android 11 to their hardware specs and features. And honestly, I don't really see that happening, but I'm open to be proved wrong. The fourth worst thing about the Infinix 08 is it's not splash resistant and does not have an official IP rating. I would really thread carefully about the bathroom sink, the kitchen sink, and since it's beginning to rain a bit here in Lagos, you should really be careful because you need to replace it if it gets water damage. The fifth and final worst thing about the Infinix 08 it's kind of a nitpick for me at this point, but it's the form factor of the phone generally. First of all, it's not the most comfortable phone to hold due to its large 6.8 inch display. With a lot of tall phones, I find myself using two hands to comfortably use it in order for it not to slip out of my hands. Again, this is more or less me nitpicking at the moment, but I would have preferred a much dedicated space at the back. Maybe you'd have put the fingerprint right here, or you can put an in-display fingerprint scanner. I mean, it's wishful thinking, right? The Infinix 08 is a decent addition to the Zero lineup. For $295, you get a 90Hz refresh rate, a fast charger, and a processor that is decent for gaming, and a headphone jack. Now, do all these features justify the price? Personally, not really, because if you add $50 extra, you can get the Pixel 4a that Google released not too long ago. And in that phone, you can get a better build quality, you can get a better and smarter software with updates up to five years, and you can get arguably one of the best cameras in a mid-range smartphone. So those are my pros and cons on the Infinix 08. Now, if you like this video, click the like button is the best way to help me out. And if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do so as I release videos like this every week. And the best way to see them is through the subscription. Thank you for watching. My name is KJOS and I'll catch you guys on the next one where we talk all things tech.